I'm Elizabeth Glenn, and this is my crazy animal adventure spider spectacular show. Deal. Thing. I'm crazy scientist girl. I have a lot of different sides and a lot of different personalities that I think all come out when I do different things with animals. I have a lot of things that I like to express. There's different sides. There's not just one side to me or really any person. Everybody thinks what they see is what they get. Oh no no. It gets a lot crazier. Come here buddy. This is Ricochet. He's my lawnmower. I mean African spur-thighed tortoise. Scientific names can tell you a lot about a creature. This is a Geochiloni sulcato. Geo meaning land, Chilonis meaning tortoise, and sulcato meaning ridge. What you can tell on the back is how he grows. Kind of like a tree with rings. Salcados are the largest mainland turtles, whereas Galapagos are the largest turtle ever. Well, since the time of the dinosaurs at least. When people first go into a pet store and see an African spur-thighed tortoise, they very usually see a little creature that's about that big, because that's how big they sell them. They don't realize that in 10 years, he'll be 45 pounds. And in another 10 years, he'll be 80 to 100, which is like my weight. I have to follow him around the yard because when he sees something, he goes after it and nothing gets in his way. His scales are very elongated and spiked. That's for in the savanna digging huge burrows, which can be anywhere from a tiny burrow about that big to sit in during the day to 10 feet down at a slope so that he can stay cool during the hottest part of the day. This is actually the perfect time for him to eat because this is when he's used to eating in the desert. Ricochet lives on a high fiber diet, 70% fiber because where he comes from, he eats tall savanna grasses. He would love nothing more than to eat a whole bunch of strawberries because of their sweet taste, but he can't really digest those. But right now he's happy, he's more than happy just to chow down on some delicious grass. He eats a lot. We have a side yard and he ate all the grass out there. We have to take him out into this yard and our neighbor's yard. But I'll tell you what, he makes the best lawn mower money can buy. You'll see that he has really strong back legs that he's trying to push me out of the way or dig his way through the air, which doesn't quite work. I just can't imagine lifting him up when he's 150 pounds. I gotta get some more muscle on me first. Uh, there you go, big buddy. Fact, the Geo Salcata, or as I like to call him, Ricochet, who lives in our backyard, the African spur thigh tortoise, does not hibernate like other turtles. Who knew? Now, I grew up with all kinds of animals. I grew up with turtles, and I grew up with little dogs, and I grew up with birds. I grew up just wanting to learn everything about everything alive. And I grew up watching a lot of TV, a lot of Discovery Channel. I one time told my mom, I said, I'll go to bed when Discovery's over. <sighs> this flightful feathery little guy is a European starling. First brought over to the United States in 1860. They were brought over because people decided they were going to bring over all the birds mentioned in Shakespeare's plays. Now there's an overpopulation of these guys. And that and sparrows. You see, these starlings take over nests like the purple martin and the bluebird, taking everything for their own, which is causing a problem with our local birds. Kind of like in Florida, where they have all kinds of iguanas and snakes and things like that loose because people decided, well, I guess I'll just let my animal loose. I don't know how to take care of this. This iguana is now four feet tall. People need to understand the responsibility of having a pet, do their research before having an animal, and make sure it's what they want. Because you can't just get an animal and then let it go and expect everything to be okay. It messes up nature, it messes up our ecosystems, and it makes animals like this starling look really bad when in Europe they're fine. But in the USA, we need our purple martins and our bluebirds. That's why it's very important that if you have a pet and you make a commitment to keep that pet, it's a promise. It's not just a uh, for a while thing. It's not just I feel like having this today. It's for a lifetime. Either yours or your animals. This is Orthoporus ornatus, or more commonly known as the desert millipede. 
Unlike the Madagascar hissing cockroaches, you could find them in your own backyard. If you lived in Arizona. You can see they mark your hands. Oh, look how fun that is. I'm a predator. <sighs> Just kidding. I wouldn't eat them. I was born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana. My dad always said that I could have any animal I wanted as long as I did all my research and took a test about it. I learned everything about tarantulas and, sp and spiders that was on a test and they let me get my first tarantula at five years old. Right now I have 40. I had more when I was 11. Uh, Hurricane Katrina struck the Gulf Coast and we had 75 inches of water in our house which took out my collection of spiders along with everything else I owned. And uh, at that point I had over a hundred spiders including babies and we were able to rescue about 13 of those. This is a tailless whip scorpion. Of course it's not really a spider and it's not really a scorpion, it's an amblypigid, which is another yet type of arachnid. Everyone knows spiders and scorpions and ticks but everyone forgets about the poor amblypigids. As you can see, they don't have a stinger on the back and a tail, but they do have little grabbies. Oh, don't. Sweet baby. These are Madagascar hissing cockroaches from, well, you guessed it, Madagascar. If most people looked in this tank, they'd call an exterminator immediately. But me, I see it as a chance to pick up and have fun. Come on in, let's show you. I'm just digging around in here trying to find our mail. You're not a meal. Ah, did you hear that hissing noise? That hissing noise is made from these small little pores, which they compress air and let out when threatened, or they actually have three hissing noises. One when threatened, one for mating, and one when fighting. Right now, I have two females, but you can always tell the males from the females because the males have big bumps on their head. Kind of looks like horns, but they're really just little bumps and their antenna are a lot furrier. Let me dig around in here and let me see what I can find. Come on, little guys, come on. They are just all hiding from me today. Clever little guys. Every year at the ATS they have something called the cockroach races and you know, like most people at first, I really don't like the really flying ones, but um, when I saw these, I picked one up and all of a sudden I was okay with it, you know, it's fine, I love bugs, so I was totally fine with playing with these. And they're really cool, they just sit on your hand, they just chill out, and uh, they are just the coolest little creatures. They, um, they're, the, they're flightless, they don't have any wings, but they can in fact scale glass and most smooth surfaces. They're really easy to take care of. You have to make sure to miss their cage because they are from Madagascar, which is a tropical climate. You have to make sure they have dog food because they can eat protein. Uh, anything like lettuce or fruits or vegetables, they'll eat it all like most roaches. I've had these for about mm, three years, three years so far, and they're doing great. Uh, we actually have a few little hybrid roaches in here because I didn't know that we had another little kind and it sort of snuck its way into the tank and we came up with uh, these guys because apparently they all interbreed and these guys are really, really fast, so they're really cool. They're not as bad as you think. Roaches get a really bad rap as well. In Hollywood, they're always depicted in things like Men in Black as the evil character or in Starship Troopers, they were, you know, the, the evil roaches that came down and ate people. Can you really see this guy eating anybody? I mean, come on, he's on my finger. If he's not gnawing on my flesh, I'm pretty sure he's okay. They're being little ladies and not shouting today. Little southern bells that they are. Oh, there we go. Obviously, they don't really want to move. But as you can tell, they make the most glorious fashions. Just because these guys are clean doesn't mean you should collect the roaches from around your house. The other ones carry disease because they eat a lot of sewage and you can imagine what's in that. But these guys eat greens and food that we monitor, so they're healthy since we've raised them from teeny tiny little babies. Plus, when the babies are born, they're born pure white and very fragile. They're very cute to look at. I wish I had some now to show you, but I don't. I'm Elizabeth Mealy, and if you thought I was a pest, you should really look under your kitchen sink. You never know what you'll find. 
I've told you before about the Madagascar hissing cockroach, but what I haven't told you about is the ground full of Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's got a new name. Science changes when new information becomes available. Ah, here it is. The Androlalap Shafiri. A small mite that lives on the legs and torso of the Madagascar hissing cockroach. Androlalap Shafiri takes part in the same meal as the roach. Originally thought to suck the juices out of the legs, it is now known that that is false. This is Kismet. She's a Cyclora Luisi hybrid. Just because she isn't green doesn't mean she's not an iguana. We've had her for, I think, eight years. She came to us about the size, half the size of her tail right now. She came to us as this ferocious, man-eating lizard. But when we got her, she was as docile as a bad kitten. She snuzzled up to us and instantly took a liking. Kismet's diet consists of leafy greens like mustard greens and collard greens and her favorite treat is blueberries. When you put down blueberries in front of her, she'll just dive in and come up with this blue mouth with all the juices and skin stuck to her face. It's actually pretty funny to see. They're not supposed to eat dog food or proteins because like the turtles, they really can't digest it and it can actually kill them. Also, they need a lot of calcium. If they don't eat a lot of calcium, they can get metabolic bone disease and they can also, which causes their limbs, their bones to get brittle and if they were to, if a predator were to attack or if something were to hurt them, their limbs would fall off. As you can see, she has a white dot right there. That's a light sensor. So if a predator is coming overhead, she can tell and she can dart away or she can you know, hide underneath something. It also helps with daytime and nighttime. She can tell when it's getting dark and can find a spot to hide for the night. Or she can tell when it's getting light and she can quickly wake up. Come on. It's so good. It's so good for you. Apparently she doesn't like carrots in this big of chunks, but she likes it in her salad. In fact, she gets salad that looks better than the salad I eat. Kismet, like most reptiles, sheds her skin. As you can see, she's going through a shed right now, which makes her very itchy. So it's kind of funny to look over and see her scratching behind her ear like a dog, which she thinks she is already. One of the defenses iguanas use is their heavily spiked tail which if a predator were to come up, she'd whip around super fast and hit them in the face or body. And really, usually, that takes care of them. Right now, she just wants to love and climb. Hey, you come here often? No? Nah. The people in this place are just animals. This is Kismet. She's a Cyclora Nubila Louisi hybrid. The Cyclora Louisi are probably some of the rarest iguanas in the world. In fact, in 1980, they were down to 30 individual creatures. Now, with the help of conservation, they're up to a few hundred, but still, that makes her kind of a find. For anybody who thinks that if something they like is weird, or anybody who's, you know, doesn't want to be different, forget it. Go with it. Be different. Be who you want to be. It doesn't matter if he thinks that you look good doing. It doesn't matter if she thinks you look awesome. It doesn't matter if, you know, what it takes to get there. Just enjoy what you do. If you're doing something because somebody else told you to and not because you want to do it, don't do it. Do it. Not your parents, obviously, but if you know, you know, peer pressure. But if you like spiders or you like reptiles, then... Learn about them. Go for it. Don't be like, oh, well, I like spiders, but I'm going to go study the shades of pink because it's what's appropriate. There's, there's so many things that you could just go for. It doesn't matter who thinks they're right. It doesn't matter who thinks it's wrong. It's about you. Go with what you want to learn. Find your passion.